it do, party peoples? You know who it is. It's your girl, Mad Max. And I know, I know you got all this bullshit fluff, you know, on ro- rolling around, roaming around on these YouTube streets. And you need to know what the real is. So, <laughs> you know, here I am. Here I am. I'm at to get my YouTube channel back popping. Y'all just wouldn't believe all of the wonderful things that are going on in my real life. And I just haven't paid my YouTube attention much channel, but much attention. But we're going to change that. But y'all, give me a second. I got to pause this because I got to finish eating my grits. It's like 1030 in the morning. So let me finish eating my grits and then we're going to come back. And I'm going to talk about this, the fucking Rona because the Rona is out here in the streets. Let's talk about that J Electronica, Al- Electronica album that I haven't even, my spirit hasn't even given me the wherewithal to bring me to listen to it on purpose. And then let's just talk about, I don't think I ever did talk about the Tyson and the Wilder fight because I had a whole bunch of stuff on Kobe, like I put out that part one video, but I never put out the additional parts. And then I wanted to talk about the whole Wilder and Tyson Fury fight. You know, I love Deontay. So I was heartbroken, but we gonna have to keep it real. So give me a minute, let me finish my grits and then we gonna, we gonna jump into it. Y'all, I can't do nothing but laugh because I, I get so excited. When y'all hear me do these videos, it's because I done got excited. I said, all right, I'm going to take um, Lent. I'm gonna take time, you know, from other things. I'm going to do this video because I need to talk to all of my, my thinking peoples out there. That's what I make my videos for, people who actually think. You don't exist. You don't live in your emotions. You actually think. <laughs> Isn't that funny coming from a cancer? But anyways, so let's get it. But now that I'm on the video, I'm like, oh, oh my gosh, I don't know if I got time. So I'm going to try to get through these topics really quick just to just to touch bases, to give you guys a pulse and some reassurance about some of the things that are going on so that you can continue to function and do um, do what you need to do in your personal life. So we all know this um, big Corona thing is going on and, and guys, if I have time, I may just want to post this and get it out. But if I have time, I'll put the, the video that I'm about to speak about at the end of this, or I'll try to put it in while I'm talking, but I probably won't be able to, cause it has talking in it as well. I think I can't remember. It's been a while. It just goes to show you some of us are, are always on it guys. Those of us who live this, we are not new found now that something is breaking out we have opinions you know I find it odd and I think it's what drove me to make this video a little bit is because like literally this is nothing and I think a lot of people who found themselves here were kind of born this way you know I didn't come into the world and say or I didn't wake up at 15 or or 20 you know whatever age I woke up I didn't wake up at like 15, 16, 17, 18 and say, hey, I want to be a conspiracy theorist. And I believe all of these negative things about our world and our government and and all of these kind of hidden conspiracy theories. You don't wake up and say that. It comes to you. And when you are a person who just likes truth, when you listen to, when you are open, very open minded to what makes the most sense and your views aren't rigid, it's like really no way you can deny it. So this is not something that I chose. It's something that seriously, I guess God put it on my, in my life. I would say around, it's always been there, but I would say really coming to the forefront after 15 years old, probably strongly around 18, between 18 and 21. I mean, back in the day, we had the Dead Prez uh, albums. That probably was one of my favorite artists back. They came out sometime when I was between 18 and 21. It was probably my favorite artist. Just everything. I've, I've been to the lectures to see Dr. Neely Fuller. Some of the uh, guys that used to be on Rainbow um, Soul Radio. Kiti Awadu. I met him. So this is all when I was under 25. So this stuff has been around for a long time. And I say that to say... The information that people like myself stumble upon, we've been studying and reading this for years. And now that a virus has broken out, I find that some people are just like some of the people in my life who may be very scared or they may be alarmed. It's like they kind of look at me like, oh, well, why aren't you alarmed? Or, you know, they just don't understand, I guess, 
how some of us feel that have been studying this stuff for years. And that's because we have been reading about the conspiracy theories or the truth, whatever you want to call them. Every time I say conspiracy theories, I'm saying that because you guys know exactly what I'm talking about. But it's not that I believe they're conspiracies. I'm using that term because everybody basically knows what a conspiracy theory is. So now that Corona is here, everybody is freaking out. And I find some of the people who have been kind of studying this. And when I say conscious, I don't, I don't mean like there's some black conscious community. I mean, conscious, when I say consciousness, I just mean you're simply aware of certain things. That's it. You could be conscious about fucking ants. You get what I'm saying? So there, there's no, this, I, when I say conscious, I'm not talking about any specific black hotep, red, black, and green consciousness. I'm just talking about people being aware of what is going on. So um, I think some of my friends and, and some people, they kind of look and say, oh, well, why are they so nonchalant? Or like you you don't want to tell people, well, you know, information like this. I mean, even if you want to go to a mundane level when people say, oh, well, the Simpsons been predicting this. Oh, well, um, the psychic. How could I forget her name? Because she's like the most popular one that used to be on Montel all the time. But my cousin has sent me a post and it basically said, let me pull his text up. Gloria, is that just Gloria something? I don't know how I forgot her name. But he has sent me like a little newspaper clipping. And the newspaper clipping said, where is it? I can never find what I want to find. Oh, that's because he sent it to me. In someone else. So that doesn't. Okay, here it goes. So it says, warning of virus in 1981. Two authors uh, appear to predict coronavirus decades before the outbreak. Dean Kuntz's thriller, The Eyes of Darkness, published in 1981, tells the story of a lethal man-made virus in Wuhan, the same Chinese city where uh, coronavirus broke out. In another spooky coincidence, the Doomsday Book, End of Days, written by American psychic Sylvia Brown. I don't know why I couldn't remember that. I have a cousin named Sylvia. I always thought Sylvia was a beautiful name. Uh, Sylvia Brown and published in 2008 predicted there would be a pneumonia like global pandemic in 2020. So we're talking about this article. This newspaper article says um, this is probably from the the sun, the Baltimore sun. I'm not sure because my cousin just sent me the actual clip and he must have cut it out of the newspaper. So it's talking about warnings of different viruses and, and things and plagues since 1981. I'm sure all you guys are, are familiar with like religious prophetess or people like Nostradamus who may have um, prophesied certain plagues or certain things that are going to happen. So this coronavirus, my point of this, because I'm not going to drag this out, we'll get into details on when I, I had time to really put some factual thing videos together for you guys. But I'm giving you right now what's coming from my spirit and that is just we don't need tarot cards or anything we're just gonna talk from spirit to spirit so plagues and diseases have been here for years they have wiped people out through history guys so you know i know a lot of people in 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 daily life and i understand because once you're focused once you have kids you have family or even just yourself and you're caught up in a rigmarole of your nine to five having to go to work having to maintain a job take care of all your bills a lot of people don't feel like they have the mental wherewithal or the energy to even prepare for things like doomsday events or do little things to make sure they're good now that is the reason my reasonable side because i understand nobody's perfect but my realistic side says, well, these same people, they party, they go out, they do a lot of frivolous things with their money. So it, it's not, it, it, myself included. So there's no excuse to not take $2 a week and go buy bottles of water and save those. There's no excuse not to take 5 or $10 every time you get paid and go get a, about five canned foods. So what I'm saying is for there to have been pandemics in history you learned about them in school and this is stuff that that for the most part I'm not going to call it man-made I'm just going to really call it a cycle of life just like you they talk about how the end was it the pilgrims gave the Indians what was it syphilis I forgot what they gave them but whatever diseases they brought with them and gave to the Indians, put it on a blanket gave it to them that could be like your first that we know of 
example of germ warfare, bio warfare. So guys, this is nothing new. Did they invent whatever disease it was? Probably not. You know, it's just something, you know, diseases and pathogens and bacteria and all of that stuff is just a part of life. I, I, humans, we don't seem to, to, to realize, hey, you've got parasites and shit crawling on your skin now that you can't even see. So you you are not the end all be all in this world. There are germs, there are plagues. People die from cancer, uh, AIDS. Um, people have herpes. People have yeast. I mean, people all types of toxins and bacteria and viruses <laughs> exist in life on a daily basis. You know, you got them right now. So it's kind of like to be so overwhelmed by Corona that we can't think realistically and to not pay any attention to history, just the natural things that happen, regardless of if it's bio warfare or not. That's why it really doesn't matter. People tend to focus on the wrong shit. It really doesn't matter if it's man-made or not. What counts is how you are observing what's going on, how you are doing what you have to do to survive, which means, okay, if we know, like, I've got a can of microban on the back of the microban, just like on the back of your Lysol wipes and things like that. It says it kills human coronavirus. So it, being prepared, just wiping down surfaces when you come in and you go out, just making sure everybody's clean and everything is clean. And you are taking your mushroom complexes, your vitamins, your tinctures that you should have been taking for years then then you wouldn't have the level of fear that you have. There's no need to fear. There's no need to worry about who, what, when, where, or why. The only thing you can do at this point is be pay attention and be prepared. Take the precautions. I went and got my mom certain sprays and stuff to make sure she's okay because she is older. She's over 70. So, you know, it is a time for those who are strong to be strong. Those who have studied this shit for years, we're not moved. We're not worried. So it's time for us to stand strong, stand firm, and prepare ourselves even more. If you were never prepared, I think this event, do I want to see people lose lives? And is this tra is is any kind of pandemic, epidemic disease or anything, just like AIDS or anything else, is it tragic? Or herpes? I mean, herpes is tragic to me. All of that shit is tragic. But it doesn't stop that it's been happening since the beginning of time. And for us to not be prepared is is unacceptable nobody unless you're homeless living on the street right now can sit here and tell me that you could not have afforded to get prepared for this because bottled water costs about what a dollar and some change i'll give you maybe even two dollars if you live someplace where they mark it up pretty high but in every store i get in just regular bottled spring water or not spring water is about a dollar and fifty cents if you're working Every time you get paid, you can buy a bottle of water. But it's not shit you can just start when shit like this happens. You have to have been doing it. Canned goods, what? Less than $2? Less than 3 You can buy. If you're broke, I'm talking to people who claim because people don't like to take responsibility. So they'll say, I'm broke. I don't have the financial means. You tell them you can't buy a can of something every time you get paid. You get what I'm saying? You couldn't buy one bottle of Lysol wipes, disinfectant, and toilet tissue. Switch it up. Buy one each month or one each pay tech check every time you get paid. If people had been consciously aware, just aware of what's going on and had been doing that, we wouldn't be in a panic now. Your lifestyle shows what's important to you. And if none of this shit is important to you until it happens, then, then you, you, you know, I feel sorry for you, your kids. I feel, I feel sorry because it's nobody's fault but yours. And that's it. And that's all. And nobody else is responsible for you the or your children. The government isn't responsible for you or your children. Your damn parents ain't responsible for you and your children once you become grown. Your damn spouse ain't really responsible for you. The law says they are, but that mother, they can walk away at any, any point in time. And I give you shit unless forced by the law. You are responsible for you and women and men. You are responsible for your children. And that's just it on a coronavirus. That's just it. Um, we can get into all the, Oh, one more thing I did want to say. I'm just gonna say this briefly. Cause this is a whole nother video that needs documentation, facts, videos kind of pieced in to show you guys what I'm talking about. But a while ago, I posted on 5G. 
so before a lot of the 5G towers has was starting to go up here in America and like during the time where they were, <clears throat> I've seen some videos. We already know the frequency waves that come from cell phones are dangerous, like low level frequency emissions. So I saw a video on this 5G and just how dangerous it is. And I can't, you guys need to see this. I can't even describe it about how dangerous this is. And I looked at it as, as sort of like something where if you look at people who live near a cancer field, I mean, a different fields where they have certain towers or chemical plants. And then you hear about those people coming down with certain cancers and tumors. This is exactly what I got from this 5G, 5G that the radiation and the waves from the 5G. And because because it's so strong, it takes many more uh, towers that are spaced apart, shorter in difference. So unlike the 4G or the 3G, where you've got these towers, but it's not as many as the 5G is going to be because, you know, that signal isn't as powerful where it needs to run off towers that are closer together. You know, now you've got 5G to where you're going to have way more towers because the power of the signal needs more, more towers to communicate. So to me, the first thing that signals in my head is, is, is physiological changes. How is this going to affect people's bodies who live near this tower? Because that's the bottom line. There are many examples in society where technology interferes with your human body. And isn't that, isn't that the whole invention of the robot, really? When, when humanism meets technology? One second, guys. I need to blow my nose. One second. So, you know, that, that goes to show you that that, that isn't far-fetched, that if something is giving off, just like they say, don't stand too close to the microwave. Now, they don't ban these things because we are living, you know, I guess ever since we started, what, the 20th or the 21st century has been a technological age. I get my centuries and what happened in each mixed up a little times because centuries are 100 years. So they, they last a little bit. So sometimes I forget what falls on what century. But... We've been in the technology age ever since we've kind of hit and gotten through the industrial age. So, you know, the technology isn't going anywhere. Even though it's things out there that can harm you, it's up to you whether you purchase and you buy those things. And to also be conscious and pay attention to how they may, may affect the body and cause physiological changes. So I believe, you know, I've been people think it's crazy talking about the 5G stories and Corona. But I'm telling you guys. I wouldn't be surprised and I kind of feel like it's true that there may be an underlying tie or correlation between 5G and the outbreak or the mutation or the um <clears throat> the the spread of this virus that has come to become such a thing because if this thing is on the back of the Lysol Kansas has been on there forever and we knew this has been around forever then obviously I don't have to be a scientist to know that something just made it mutate something just made it because it doesn't say it kills animal corona so obviously corona has been a, a, a disease that has been found in a human before or that a human could get you get what I'm saying? So it's not like this thing has always been in animals and somebody ate a bat and now all of a sudden it's spreading to humans. I, I don't believe that. I don't believe that. Something caused this virus that has always been around to mutate or to kick up to a level that could not be immediately cured that he didn't have a vaccine for. That could have either been done man-made in a lab or by nature. So like I was telling you, where it's coming from, at the end of the day, is not the most important thing. It's just how you are prepared and making sure you are aware and preparing your children. That is your responsibility. And if you can't do that, then you really ain't shit. So let's move on. Make these next ones real, real quick. J Electronica. I don't want to hear no fucking J Electronica album 30 years past when I thought I was going to get it. Sorry, sorry, sorry. No disrespect to J Electronica, but disrespect to J Electronica. And I see all my conscious brothers, you know, they, they pumped about this album. It's got all these keys, all the Muslim brothers, because he's a Muslim. And I fucks with Farrakhan now. Don't, don't get it twisted. I, I will never claim a religion other than free spirituality. But I fucks with Farrakhan. Please don't mistake it. But, you know, so, I mean, I guess I see why the conscious dudes and the people are really riding this J Electronica chain. Um, train. Now, let me just say, 
again, let's take it back. I was in a relationship for like most of my young life. And I had, uh, I'm one of those females who I do not come from a family where it's just all women or it's mostly women. I don't, I don't come from that kind of family. I had just as many men in, in my family. I had my dad, I'm a daddy's girl. Uh, some would venture to say I was closer to my dad than my mom, but I'm, I'm the same amount of close to both. Love my mom to death and love my dad to death. Um, and so, you know, I had uncles, my father, father had like three, four brothers, two sisters, my mom, sisters, brothers. So I don't have a family that was raised around mostly women. I have a lot of male influences in my life. And then the three brothers that I have, they're really my cousins and I call them my brothers because we grew up so tight lots of times in the same household. They're, they're boys. So I didn't come out in a house and then I have a sister, but she's 10 years older than me. So by the time you know, we could never hang together on that same level. You know, I was always just her little sister until recent days, you know, that I've been in my 30s and above. So there's a lot of males in my family. So I'm not just speaking as someone who has just discovered J Electronica. I mean, and then, like I said, on top of that, I was in a relationship for most of my life. So that guy was very um, conscious. And this is where it started when we were 18 years old and even younger than that, because it had to both be already be in both of us. So whenever it was when J Electronica came out with Exhibit C, which was sometime between when I was 20 and 30, it's been so long, I don't matter. It must have been closer to when I was 30. If that was 10 years ago, we were waiting on this album after his Exhibit Exhibit C was doing like all. Awesome, right? So we all like J Electronica. We all love J Electronica. It's no question and no doubt about that. So no disrespect in that way. No disrespect, but I'm about to get disrespectful. Actually, I'm not gonna get disrespectful at all. It's just I'm just saying that to say that there's definitely a love and appreciation for J Electronica, the way his mind works and his contributions that he has given us through his words throughout the years. Okay, so um, I am not one of these newfound rap or hip hop fans. I'm speaking on this from a perspective of somebody who's been in the culture for years. Um, and it's not even a culture. This is just black way of life. <laughs> any any down to earth, normal black folks this is just black way of life. And I didn't grow up in no ghetto and this is still black way of life. So I wanted, I really wanted something from J. Electronica after that, after Exhibit C. Like I said, I'm exaggerating saying 30 years, but I wanted something from J Electronica 10 years ago. For some reason, now I totally believe in the spook who stepped by the door. That's one of my most favorite movies I ever watched. I totally believe the black people who have to infiltrate that society to kind of get that information, kind of get where we need to be. I get that. No judgment on that. But J Electronica lost me when he became butt buddies with Jay-Z. And when he kind of left Erica and went with the rich white woman, which, like I said, maybe Jay is the spook who sat by the, the door. I have no further judgment on that. It is what it is. Only the people behind the scenes know what's really going on. So, you know, I kind of lost any admiration or any, like, any bit of a pedestal I had put J Electronica on. I lost it around that time. So, you know, after that, after about three, five years, I didn't want to fucking hear nothing else from J Electronica if he wasn't coming out with no music at that time. And I've been hearing on and off over the years, oh, J Electronica's coming with an album. J Electronica's coming with an album. And I'm just like, who gives a shit? Nobody wants it now. Like keep producing and keep doing what you do. If it takes you that long to give one, Maybe that's really not your thing. Maybe you're better behind the scenes. Maybe. So on top of that, it's like, well, regardless of that, not on top of that, but regardless of that, if you are then going to give an album, so you say, okay, I've taken 10, 20, 30 years to put out an album. Now I'm going to give you one. But you know what? I'm going to give you one. That has Jay Z on. on and I have not even listened to the album on purpose. I'm gonna give you one that has Jay Z on every track, and it isn't even better than my Exhibit C days. Like, I know that 
Jay Electronica's words, he's probably spitting some hot fire. And I mean, even if it doesn't sound good to people, I know he's spitting some shit that's going to stimulate the mind. But I, I can go to anyone and get that. I don't have to go to Jay Electronica. Number two, on top of that, not that Jay, hey, Jay could be another spook who sat by the, by the door. I get that. But again, I don't got to go to Jay-Z to get anything knowledgeable or conscious. I can get that from many other people who's been doing this shit transparently for years. So for Jay Electronica to come with an album 30 years later and have another motherfucker on it that people really not that hype about, like us who have been in this shit for a long time and do not dick ride. I don't care who you are. If you fuck up, you fuck up. Period. Period. So, you know, from Jesus on down, nobody, none of y'all, nobody's perfect. Nobody's a celebrity, celebrity and nobody's a star to me. We all are. And I don't want to hear a J Electronica album 10 to 30 years later with someone else on almost all the songs that you're playing tag team with. Why would you get people hype for a J Electronica album? Why wouldn't you just market it as a joint album with Jay-Z? Then you let somebody else get on your album. And I'm hearing now, I didn't heard this. Like I said, I could go right now and press play and listen to the J Electronica album, but I refuse to. And then I'm hearing almost every person that has commented on this album said Jay-Z ran J Electronica on this album. And when I say ran, I mean, Jay-Z outdid him. Jay-Z fucking took the prize on this nigga's album that we've been waiting 30 years for. Fuck out of here. Like, I don't even get that. I don't even get that at all. I think they're what, Virgo and Sage? If I'm not mistaken, isn't Jay Electronica Virgo is Jay-Z the Sage? Or am I wrong? I know I'm right about Jay-Z. Let me see what Jay Electronica's birth date is. It would make sense if he was a Virgo doing that. Let me see. I'm just typing it in real quick. Let's see. Jay Electronica. Let's see what we get, party peoples. And then once I fix, see what his birthday is, we're going to be past. We'll get off of, um, we can get off of Jay Electronica. I'm freak to this thing. Yup. September 19th, Virgo. Sure enough, makes sense. They're so... They're so analytical and they can tell you all about you, but, but they can't tell you shit about themselves. It, it's all like a mind manipulation rhetoric from a, a low level Virgo. And I'm not calling Jay Electronica a low level Virgo, but I see what he did, some low level Virgo traits than what he just did with this project. And I, I don't like it anyway, moving on and leave your comments below. The hate, the love, just just leave it below. We'll talk. I'll be back. I promise. Maybe. Then let's just talk about Wilder and Tyson really quick. Who getting this is for anybody making these videos? This is for anybody singing this. It's just for anybody. Now, again, daddy's girl here, which means I mean, boxing is one of my favorite sports. I grew up watching sports with my dad since a fucking baby, right? But for whatever reason, boxing has always been my favorite. Basketball was my favorite during the time where the Bulls were the shit. Back with Pippen, Michael Jordan, and all that. I mean, I had to be under 10. You know what I mean? But for all of my life, boxing has really been the one. Boxing has really been the sport for me that I love to watch with my dad the most. So I, I don't know a lot of the technical aspects. I got a lot of boxing aficionados, but I've been watching it long enough to have a passion for boxing. In sports... We all know sports are rigged. It's rigged. <laughs> you know what I mean? We all know that. We all know sports can be rigged. We know that cheating occurs. We know that cheating happens. And we know that not everything is is fair. I mean, we've seen ref, refs call games where we know they just had to be getting paid by the one of them teams for the way they made them calls. So we know that there is an element of cheating in sports. There, there's just an element of cheating in life. The game is rigged, folks. Hello, how you doing? The game is rigged. As black people, I know we know that. White folks, I know you know that too. Any in Spanish, you know it too, right? So I'm tired of fucking hearing the videos talking about, oh, Deontay Wilder was cheated. And then Tyson Fury do this or do that. 
It wouldn't be the first fucking time somebody's been cheated in the sport. And it just sounds like a lot of sore loser shit. If I was Deontay Wilder, I wouldn't want people out here making videos talking about how I got cheated and somebody hit me with a low blow or somebody's gloves was off or they hit me here. Because what happened in the ring happened in the fucking ring. It's not a lot of times that people will go back and say, oh, well, this is going to happen or this is going to happen because we noticed this. It ain't about how a man loses. It's about how he gets up and fights his fucking battles. And anybody who is not sucking Deontay's dick and caping for Deontay, if you watch that fight, you would know that man was not prepared and he didn't have it in him for Tyson that night. Whether the glove was on, off, the shorts was on, off, or the shoe was on and off. Wilder didn't have it for Tyson that night. And I fucking love Wilder. Everybody know that's like my one of my boyfriends in my head. Him and Anthony Joshua in a sandwich. Boyfriends in my head. Okay? Fucking kings. Beautiful men. So, I, I just want to get over that. I want to get over that. I want people to stop caping for Wilder. Because he should have came better that night. When I was sitting here with my peoples watching that fight. <laughs> as soon as he came out, niggas was like. Oh, oh, hell no. What the fuck he got? Oh, hell no. He looking crazy. This nigga, he about to lose this fight. On everything I have the video I can play, that's exactly what the men in my house said when that fight came on. He didn't even have to walk down. They knew as soon as they seen him in that shit, it was going to be one of them nights. And it, 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 it damn near broke my heart to see that man get the, get the shit beat, beat out of him like he did. You get what I'm saying? That's why all this shit y'all talking about cheating, you really wasting your time. Because that man didn't lose that fight. He got the shit beat out of him. Damn near. So let's, let's, I don't know. Y'all people just passionate about a lot of bullshit. I, I don't know. Y'all need me on this internet because I don't know what the fuck. I don't know what's going on. I don't know what's people have gone crazy. All right. That was short and sweet. So what, what Wilder just needs to do and we saw Wilder came with his rituals. See, everybody want to talk about the rituals Tyson was doing. But Wilder came with his rituals just because they African rituals or whatever he called that. Because that shit he had on could not have been African. And if he was channel channeling like the Black Panther movie shit, that's probably why he lost. Because you're fucking channeling a movie. Anyway, that Wakanda shit ain't for real. Anyway, all he can do is go get you a real boxer trainer. Put down your Libra Scorpio hard-headedness and listen to your trainer and learn how to fight. Because a, a one-hitter quitter, lucky punch, ain't going to help you become or maintain the best boxer in the world. And on that note, I just will have to say I've never been so disappointed by two boxers in my life as I had by Anthony Joshua and Deontay Wilder. It's just like they say, the bigger they are, the harder they fall. And lastly... That's it, guys. I'm out of this bitch. I, I I can't talk no more. I gotta go. I got something to do. Got something to do in like 30 minutes. I gotta go. But the last thing I want to say is a lot of people. I had some strong opinions on like DL men, and I just have strong opinions on people who do shit sneakily on the low to hurt maliciously hurt other people. Anyway, that shit will never be acceptable. We are all in this life. We are all going to die. Sometimes you have to, the things have to be worth dying for. And I voiced my opinion on the woman from Illinois who outed the down low men and they ended up killing her. And a lot of people was like, well, keep your mouth shut. Keep your mouth shut. Mind your business. Mind your business. No, if people are doing things that cause harm to other people, they have a right to out that person. And if you don't want your shit out it, nobody can control anybody else's mouth. People can tell anything about you that they fucking want to tell. And that's just the bottom line. Am I saying the way the way she did what she did was it right? No. Did she have to hop online? Did she have to blast them? Did she have to try to blackmail him for money? I'm not saying none of that's right. But see y'all getting caught up in a lot of people are getting caught up in the 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 details and I'm talking about the bigger picture of the fact that yes, she died. She may have had kids. I'm sure she had family people that's going to miss her. But we all got to go one day. So I don't know what the fuck this thing is about death because somebody did something and it caused that death. We're all sensitive. Like, oh, she died. She shouldn't have said nothing. Y'all motherfuckers ain't going to stand up for nothing, are you? You just ain't never going to have a reason to stand up for nothing. Not even your own life, your own dignity, your own health. Just everything is okay, right? 
Everything is okay until it happens to you. Then you'd be wishing somebody would have told you and stood up. I do not understand the pulse of the people. I do not understand the mental, um, the mental vibration of the collective out here. I don't get it. This is a frustrating society, guys. That's why I had to just come and kick it with you a little bit and just give you just some, some different alternative opinions to make you think. And I would definitely like to see your comments below because I'm going to come back and comment back to your comments. I always try to answer all of my comments. So let me know what you guys think. If there are any other topics you want to hear me talk about research and put on, put it down below in the comments. Hit me up by the email, tarothelpnow at gmail.com. And I, I want to come back and do a breakdown and talk more about the corona and the 5G. Because as soon as I heard that link, it did not surprise me, especially like I told you guys, because I had posted a video a long time ago talking about the dangers of 5G. So, Madam X, I'm about this bitch. I'll talk to y'all later. See ya. Have a great day. And be safe out there. Always.